we will take literature we will take new chapter chapter 15 so uh, open page open page to uh, thir 330 330 please get your book and open 330 i'll share for you the powerpoint miss you didn't upload an online assignment for the homework yesterday I did, I did. It will be published to the, to, today morning. I don't, something happened in the timing. Uh, so I had to uh, make the timing for uh, in the future. And he kept saying to me that the date should be in the future. So I made a, a date a one day. So today ah. at 11 a.m. it will be shown. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. okay uh, I'll share the PowerPoint. Here is it. Frankenstein's cat. Okay, here is it. Okay. Do you see the PowerPoint? Yes. 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 Okay, as we used to, what do we do at the beginning of each chapter? We need the academic, huh? Academic what? Academic what? What do we take in the vocabulary. beginning of the? Yes, academic vocabulary. The academic vocabulary for uh, each chapter, okay? And then we make connection. The academic vocabulary that we will learn, the first one is balanced presentation. Balanced presentation, balanced presentation. Okay, what is balanced, balanced presentation? When I want to talk about a topic and I have an opinion, okay, I I should do what do what I should support my opinion. But when I want to present a balanced presentation, I don't want to take a side. I don't want to take a side of the argument. No, I want to make the two sides equal and let the the person in front of me decides. So I do not take a side, I'm neutral, okay? So I have the uh, pros and cons of a topic and pros and cons of the other topic. So giving evidence to support both sides of an issue in order to fairly present the issue. So the speaker promised a balanced presentation of the issue. However, she only gave evidence in favor of the building of a uh, condominium units. So here she talk about a topic. She says the good things about the topic and in the same time the bad things about it. So she gives a balanced presentation. Balanced presentation. This is a balanced presentation. So I do not take a side. OK? Then present participial participle tense. Present participle tense. Teacher, it's a grammar. Yes. A grammar in the academic vocabulary that you have to know the tense. A verb forms with an ing ending. Participle. Ing. A verb form with an ing ending, indicating a present action. When you use liking, rowing, talking, you are using the present participle tense. A verb ends in ing. A verb ends in ing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then we take a subtopic. Subtopic, today's academic vocabulary are very easy and you've taken them before. Subtopic is a specific aspect of a broader topic. So I have a topic. I have a to I want to talk about uh, internet. So the main topic, the broad topic is internet. The subtopic, subtopic is what? Subtopic is uh, uh, social media. Another subtopic is search, uh, like Google search uh, engines. 
Uh, so the broad topic is the Internet. Subtopic is a smaller part of the broad topic. So it's social. And so another subtopic is search engines. A third subtopic is uh, data anal analysis and everything and this. So these are subtopics are smaller topics taken from the broader topic. So Alice paper on the future of jellyfish, including several subtopics that detail the various types of jellyfish found in the ocean. Subtopic and then transition. What is transition? Transition is a word or phrase that connects one idea to the next. So when I want to move from a topic to another, from a topic to another, I have from a paragraph to another, from an idea to another, I have to move smoothly. Why? In order to connect the ideas. When I want to move or transition, to make a transition from a, an idea to another, from a phrase to another, from a paragraph to another, I have to move smoothly. I don't jump. That's why in each kind of writing we have transitional words. So transition is a word or phrase that connects one idea to the next. One idea. So so when I I, I want to write about a process, I say first you have and blah 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 blah. Then then or a second, third, however. On the other hand, if I'm comparing, so these are words or phrases are used to connect ideas together. The last one, participial phrase, and we took participial phrase in the grammar this year. Participant is a word that looks like a verb, but acts like an adjective. And participial phrase, when this word comes with its modifiers. So, participial phrase, phrase is a group of words. Okay? Participial phrase is a group of words that includes a, a verb form. It looks like a verb, but it doesn't act like a verb. It acts as an adjective. It comes in present, I add ing, or in past tense, I add ed, or irregular form and acts like an adjective by modifying a noun or pronoun. So participial phrase acts like an adjective, like an adjective in the instant ing or ed. I began my report with the following participial phrase, tripping over my own feet. So here, brimming with confidence, brimming. OK, it's a phrase because there is no subject and no predicate. Brimming with confidence, comma, Jack blurted the answer. So this is a participial phrase modifying Jack. How did I know? It ends in ing. There is no verb to be before it. There is no subject. There is no predicate. Why it's used? It's used as an adjective to the noun Jack. Okay, girls, again, before we start our topic again we review the academic vocabulary number one is what girls presentation yes Najwa what is a balance presentation Najwa when you give evidence so you balance mm -hmm. like uh, the issue in the two sides yes thank you then Present participle tense. Present participle tense. Noor Abdel Kirim, what is present participle tense? Uh, yes, it is a verb that either ends with I and uh, it ends with ing uh, and it indicates a uh, present action, something happening now. Yes. Okay. Uh, Noor Bilal, what is a subtopic? Uh, it is a topic that is part of the main topic. Yes. Kadra, what is transition? Yes, when you move from one idea to another idea smoothly, you use this word. Yes. Okay. Uh, Lujain, what is percipial phrase? <coughs> uh, 
a phrase that starts with a participial, which is like um, with a part. Yes, a verb that a word that looks like a verb that ends with ing, but as a phrase, it acts like an adjective. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. So now um, I want uh, Sarah to read page two three hundred and thirty. Okay. Uh, assessing balance in informational text, preview concepts. What is the difference between a topic and a subtopic? Write your ideas in the space below. So what is the difference between a topic and a subtopic? Yes, or? A topic is the main idea, the main issue, while the subtopic is what is coming out of that topic. So it's yes. like a part of that topic. Yes, read it. Mm. Subtopics are more specific aspects of broader subjects. In a text, authors move from one subtopic to the next, linking them with, the top with topic sentences, trans trans transitional phrases, and verb phrases in order to connect to the main idea. A writer, a writer must use sentence placement and paragraphing to make the connection between ideas for the reader. When authors discuss controversial topics, they may wish to convey information without taking sides. In such cases, authors attempt to balance the claims of those who support an idea and those who oppose it. Presenting facts and letting readers decide can be a difficult task. A balancing act, some might may say. So what does he want to say here, Isar? He talks about what? How the authors, they try to connect the, the subtopics together. Yes. They connect subtopics using what? They use the trans transitional phrases and they use verb phrases. Yes. And so in order to, to transition, to connect ideas, they, would, uh, they use transitional words. And what else did he, he say? When um, the authors discuss about, controversial issues. Yes, so they use both sides' um, opinions so that they don't like take a side and everyone is... Uh, like is, can like accept it. Yes. Or yes. They they give they present everything. They present the bad and good stuff about an issue, and let the reader decide. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you, Sarah. Turn the page three hundred thirty-one. Layan, Maghrabi. Mm, yes, ma'am. Do I read? Yes, dear. Yes, read the 331. Okay. Making connections. Back then, cats are not the same as they were when, when humanity began, adopting them as pets thousands of years ago. There are now many breeds, each known for its size, temperament, and physical characteristics. A chihuahua, for example, is a small, scrappy, fiercely loyal dog with bulging eyes. A golden red river, by contrast, is a large, strong, strongly built, and widely considered patient, friendly, and kind. Do you have a pet? If so, what kind and where did you obtain it? Did modern technology play a part in creating the breed? If you don't have a pet, what two breeds or characteristics would you mix to make the perfect pet and why? Yes, so... Uh... I'll share for you. So who has a pet? Who has a pet? No Mas one? I used to have, but he died. Uh, oh, it was a what? A cat. Oh. Okay. Yes, so we have uh, five cats. Five cats? Yes. Ooh. And uh, and how do you feel about it? Uh, happy. Happy? You like cats? I like dogs more than cats, but I also like cats, but it's okay. It's okay. So what was, Lian, what was the main question, page 331? Do you have a pet? Mm. And if you don't, what are like two two breeds you would mix together to create a perfect pet? Mm. Yeah. So breed is the kind of the the dog. Like, do you see Google? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the German Shepherd. This is the Bulldog. This is Poodle. Labrador Retriever. Golden Retriever. Siberian Husky. Chihuahua. This is the Chihuahua. French Bulldog, okay. 
mountain dog, Pomeranian, Greyhound, Doberman. Look at the breeds of dogs, how many? This is a Maltese dog. So, do you prefer to have a dog or cat? A dog. If you want, if you prefer to have a dog, raise your hand. Mm. Seven only? Okay. So, uh, Raghad, what is the breed that you'd like to have? From the breed? Uh, I don't have a specific one, you know. Miss, are you talking? There is something with the voice that Miss, you're lagging. I lag? So I'll change the network, girls. Be with me. Okay. And uh, now is better? Yes, miss. I changed the network. Okay, what is, uh, Darin, what is the breed you'd like to have of dogs? Uh, I don't know, miss, if I'm going to say it right, but it's paranoma or something like this. Paranoma? Yes, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, so it's not here, huh? Okay, I... when he talks about... When he talks about to pick two breeds and you marry them together in order to get a new one. In order you get a new breed of dog. So sometimes when you buy a German Shepherd, he says to you, it's not pure German Shepherd. It's not pure. Maybe uh, it's father or it's mother. Another, uh, for example, a Husky with a Shepherd, for example. Okay, uh, I, ha I have a friend of mine who she has a dog and the dog is, uh, um, where is it, a Maltese with a Chihuahua. Uh, here is the Chihuahua. She is in, in the middle. Chihuahua and Maltese. Okay. Cats also. Cats also have, cats, cats also have breeds. Okay, so the Persian, Bengal, British, Siam, Sphinx cat. Okay, so uh, do you ha get any idea of two breeds that you marry them together to get a new breed? Kretin, are you here? Yes. yes. <laughs> so discuss with me. 
it's maybe the German Shepherd to the Siberian Husky. Ah, uh, they will get a what? A German Siber Siberian Husky Shepherd. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Okay. I feel like it's not interesting for you. I thought you'd be you'd be interested because it's about cats, uh, dogs, and this. Okay, so I'll ask no. another question. What is a controversial topic? What is the most controversial topic? When people talk about it, they fight. <laughs> controversial is uh, there are many opinion about a topic. Hello? It should be related to dogs and cats. Dogs and cats? No, no. The most controversial topic uh, in, in, the, in, in your life, what is a controversial topic happens around you all the time? Politics. Politics, excellent, yeah. You always get a, a perfect answer. Politics, so when people just start talking about politics, they lose each other at the end of the conversation. They stop talking to each other again. <laughs> politics is the most controversial topic. What else? Among men. It is another topic among them, especially men. Football. Soccer. Excellent. Yes, football, the soccer. Uh, I. This is a club and this is another club and they fight and they kill each other in the end. In all the countries, by the way, not only Arab, among Arabs. What is another controversial topic? I, among your, in, in your, at your age. Maybe online studies. Online studies. Like nowadays. Uh -huh. It is a controversial topic. How Najwa? How Noor or Najwa answer? It's Najwa. Like some yes. people say we want online, some other like be praying we want to come back to school. In yes. Home. Yes. So nowadays the most controversial topic is people who don't want to school, go to school and people who want to go back to school. What about you, Najwa? You want to go back or you don't want to go back? I don't know. It doesn't matter any as long as I'm <laughs> understanding. Mm -hmm. OK. Why we discuss uh, the, the idea of a controversial topic and this? Because the topic we will take today is about a controversial topic, as we say. It's controversial. It means that and not everyone will agree of it. Okay, so there is a side who uh, refuses and a side who agrees. Uh, our excerpt, this chapter, it's called Frankenstein's Cat. Uh, Frankenstein's Cat. Frankenstein's Cat is written by Emily Anthes. Okay. It was published 2007. It is a close. Uh, one, Emily Anthes, okay, uh, Lilian, read Lilian. Natalie? Yes, miss. Read Natalie. Emily Anthes is a self-described scientist. Uh, Science, science geek. You know who is a geek when you say, ah, you're a geek, it, it, when you love something so much. So she was described as a science geek. Science geek, a uh, science geek and author. And a science journalist, she, she earned a bachelor degree in history of science and medicines from Yale. Yale University, a master degree in science from the... Massachusetts. 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 And it's I'll just give it of technology. Wait, wait a minute, because the electricity gone out, so I have to open the window. Wait a minute.
Okay, I'm back. So uh, we were talking about Emily and this. Okay. Uh, so she got her uh, bachelor degree in history of science and medicine of a university, and then she made a master's degree in science. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Durra? Yes, miss. Read, please. Um, Anne's book, Frankenstein's Cat, was published in 2013. Anne opposes frivolous use, use of genetic modification on animals. Okay, As an example, so uh, wait, Tidur. So what is yes. what is frivolous use of genetic modification of animals? Frivolous means uh, reckless, dangerous. Uh, more of dangerous is reckless, okay, without thinking of the consequences well. Frivolous use of genetic modification on animals. What is genetic modification? You know, have you studied the genes, girls, in biology? Yes. That, for example, yeah. if your mom has a yellow hair, you inherit the gene? Yes. Okay. So, uh, scientists started to change these genes by themselves. So they, they interfere in the, in, in the genes of the animals, how, for example, for example, if you want your uh, uh, daughter to have a dark eyes, so you get the gene of the dark eyes and plant it in it, in, in the egg and, and in the egg and this. So as experiments, they did that in fish. Okay, continue reading, Yedurra. Yes, as an example of a frivolous use of the technology, Antis discusses Glowfish, uh, the first widely available genetically modified pet. Glowfish are rainbow fish that glow in the dark because they have been altered with GFP protein that occurs naturally in a type of jellyfish. However, so, the scientists brought fish, kind of fish, and they, in it, they, they injected with GFP protein that occurs naturally in a type of jellyfish. So, the, the, you know jellyfish that, have you seen Nemo? Did you see Nemo? Did you watch Nemo, girls, the, the fish that wants to go back to his father? Yes, yes. When he said, uh, when when there was Dory, and she said, wow, a star, uh, 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 and then he said to her, no, Dory, it's a jellyfish. Because it was shining. Jellyfish glows. There is a kind of jellyfish that glows. Wait. Uh, are you with me or asleep today? No, Miss, we are here. No, Miss, we are here. Okay, yes, I'll share yes. for you here the Google to see. Here is the glowing jellyfish. It's it's real, yani it exists. Allah created it like this. Glowing jellyfish glow, it glows in the dark. So they took the protein, took the gene of, of this of this jellyfish, the glowing part, they took it and they injected, they injected in the in the fish. They injected in the fish and they made it glow. So normally this fish was glowing. No, it wasn't glowing. It is injected. It's injected by a protein of jellyfish to glow in the dark. OK, to glow in the dark. So this is called what? Genetic modification. When you modify the genes, okay, for your purposes, I want the fish to glow, so I inject it with a protein, and then the the coming generation will inherit it as a gene, so they will glow. Okay. Is it what? Is this? The protein that's injected in the fish, is it bad for the fish or 
It, it, they say it's uh, because it's normal and have been sustained from uh, jellyfish, so it will not affect the fish. But actually, here, uh, Emily opposes this. Emily wrote Frankenstein's cat to oppose this, to oppose the frivolous use of genetic modifications on animals. Okay? You create new breed of animals. So she, they created new kind of fish, the glow fish. They will create new kind of animals. And we don't know the, the consequences. What will happen? Would that affect? If it's good for the fish, so why the fish was not created with this from the beginning? Okay, so this is the science modification or the science uh, interfering when science uh, or technology we use technology for scientific reasons experiments in this okay so uh, look at this uh, there is a scientist who uh, invented this so i will show you Again, uh, it's not uh, it's not on Google. So what uh, what they want to say here? He wants to say one scientist is using GFP to create living pollution detectors. Uh, so fish that glow if they swim in polluted water. So the plant in the fish. They plant in the fish a detector, a detector, a sensor. So if it swims in a polluted water, okay, it glows. So it's another experiment on fish, another uh, genetic modification, modification on fish. One to make it glow and one to make it glow if it swims in polluted water. So Emily opposes this. She's against interfering in genes and genetic modification. That's why she called her story Frankenstein's cat. Why? Why? So we have to know first about Frankenstein. Frankenstein is a story, okay, uh, Belkis or Asma, Belkis or Asma, Asma, Belkis, Dalia, yes, yes. Dalia, yes, read Dalia, yes, uh, the novel Frankenstein is the story of a scientist whose ex ex explorations into life and death led to this disastrous, disastrous results. Yes. Inspiration for Emily Sorrels often used the novel's themes to launch discussions about the ethics of using science to alter the natural processes underlying organisms and ecosystems. Yes. So uh, before we start in the topic of Frankenstein, uh, the period finishes now. Yes. Yes. So let's just stop here and five minutes break and we meet again before we discuss Frankenstein. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.